Well, Professor Lakshmi Narayanan, the real numbers in India are four deaths, perhaps five deaths. Uh, what is your sense? Are these accurate numbers? So, uh, the number of deaths is based on actually testing people for COVID. And uh, we don't test many people. Our testing standard is basically that we test people who come off a plane or people who have known contact with a confirmed case. That's a very narrow testing standard. So if you got COVID in the community, uh, no one is going to test you for coronavirus right now. And because of that, we are uh, seriously probably undercounting cases. Uh, at this stage in the epidemic, we probably have had community transmission for a, for a few weeks now, probably two or three weeks. And uh, keep in mind, we don't count deaths in our country because we don't have a good death tracking system. So if someone died in a hospital with respiratory symptoms who also had diabetes or also had some cardiovascular conditions, we would never know about it. And that's really the situation we're in right now. But very soon that day will arrive when the numbers are just cannot be avoided because they start going up so much that it becomes you know, socially noticeable and, uh, and that's what we're up against. Uh, based on the data generated by Wuhan, uh, what numbers could there potentially be out in India at this, case, at this stage in terms of true numbers? Okay, so this virus, although it's novel, it behaves like a flu virus with respect to transmission, very much like a flu virus. And it generates roughly 2.3 cases for every individual is infected. So every in infected individual is generating another two to three secondary infections, which is what causes that exponential growth. Uh, given our estimates today, we probably think that the number of actual cases in the tens of thousands but remember, most of them are mild infections. So people won't even know that they had, you know, coronavirus, uh, that they had COVID. But a small proportion, maybe about, you know, six to 8,000 probably have severe disease and they're around the country. But our surveillance system is not able to track 7,000 people with severe disease in a country of 1. 4, almost 1.4 billion. So uh, we have challenges. Ten to ten tens of thousands right now, if we don't, isolate in a much more effective way, by which I mean a proper lockdown uh, in identified cities, then where can we be in terms of these numbers? So in terms of these numbers, uh, unless we completely shut down, which I, I personally think is impossible for India, given our population and people have to work every day and so forth, we're headed to uh, you know a total of about 300 to 500 million cases uh, by July. Now, that sounds like a lot, and I want to reassure your viewers, most of those cases are going to be mild. You won't even know anything worse than, you know, small fever or, or uh, you know, respiratory symptoms or whatever. It's only a small proportion of these that will be severe, and the, the population at risk is really the elderly. So, really, all the social distancing we are doing is not for ourselves at our age. This is a battle to save the elderly, and that's really what this is about. Uh, and again, neither your goal nor my goal as, as a presenter is to scare people. But no. if, if we don't distance, socially distance more effectively, uh, then in terms of, of, of the number of fatalities, and I take your point completely that the elder, uh, those who are older are more susceptible, those with uh, other ailments simultaneously are more susceptible, what numbers could we look at? We would probably be looking at something in the range of about 10 million severe infections over that period of time, which goes from about, you know, four weeks from now to about 12 weeks from now. And uh, and that number of severe infections, some of them will translate into deaths, quite a few, in fact, it could go up to as many as a million or two million deaths. Uh, and if you think that's large, uh, those are projections which are conservative even by, say, U.S. estimates or, or uh, uh, you know, other estimates. Uh, possibly the arrival of the summer will help us a little bit based on the new data that are emerging. We can't bank on it, but I think it may help us somewhat, particularly in the south of India. Uh, but, uh, you know, just to give your viewers again some context here, in India there are 8 million deaths every year. So if you add another 1 million or 1.5 million, you might say, okay, that's only a 10 or 15% increase in deaths. For us as a society, we're going to have to deal with that very large number of deaths in a very short period of time. That's what would be very difficult for us, and we need to prepare for that, that this is going to happen. And to some extent, even with the most amount of social distancing, we're headed down this path. So 
this is just the way in which this virus works.